Welcome to Building Influence, presented by Elite Leadership Coaching by Andrea. I am your hostess, Andrea White. I'm a leadership and business coach, and I get to work with a lot of uh, really great corporate and nonprofit professionals and small business owners who often feel stuck or unclear or in their professional setting, they're not really supported to increase their leadership intelligence, uh, their influence, income, position, and power. And often when working with um, these professionals and small business owners, my clients, uh, we do work together through one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, online small business groups, uh, workshops, live events, keynote presentations are the most frequent avenues in which I'm able to work with people. So at the end, you will have a little more information about how to get in contact with me, and hopefully we will have the opportunity to work together in the very near future. In the meantime, Let's jump into our topic around building influence and what's covered. We are going to talk about what personal influence is and how to develop it, uh, how you can use different sources of personal power to increase your influence. Uh, we're going to also uh, talk about some specific strategies to improve your influence and skills so you can control the type of work you do and gain more satisfa satisfaction from your career. And then most important, on top of learning this new knowledge and some new skills, uh, we'll put together a really quick action plan so that you can um, move from knowledge and skill uh, to actually putting it into practice. Okay, so let's get started. What is influence? Uh, it's often, of course, is often misunderstood. And so one of the things that I think is really important to understand up front is uh, power and influence are actually uh, closely linked. And so if you purchase the four course leadership bundle, we'll actually have a separate course on power. Um, but these two things actually go together. A person who seems powerful is not necessarily influential. However, for someone to be influential, he or she has to have some power. It's a really interesting dynamic and hopefully you'll become more comfortable with the concepts as we move through uh, this particular course. Um, when we talk about power, it really can bring up some interesting visions and maybe experiences and memories on your behalf. You may have visions of, you know, somebody being vengeful or domineering. Uh, it's sometimes associated with people who are manipulative and who convince others to do things against their will. But power and influence can actually be positive and are necessary if you want to progress in business. Uh, and so I think at the very base and foundation of learning about leadership, uh, increasing your ability to build influence and power are actually foundational skills. And even as you rise up to executive leader or C-suite or executive director, um, working on your influential skills and your skills of power, um, that doesn't ever stop. It's something that you constantly refine and get better at. Uh, when you get the balance right, a high degree of influence is a sign of personal efficacy. Influential people often help shape a really positive environment, and they uh, do a really good job of motivating others to do great work. Those who influence are held in high esteem within organizations and colleagues typically want to work with them. However, problems often start when people feel unable to influence decisions. They either get angry at the system that keeps ignoring them or they become apathetic and quit trying. 
Uh, both are really self-destructive, of course, and cause others to lose confidence. So people in management or leaders with little influence are often really ineffective. And if they abuse the influence that they do have, it actually, of course, can lead to low morale and poor performance within their teams. But it is possible to find the right balance uh, and it's this empowered position that you want to be in. And there are several strategies you can use to become influential. We'll discuss these during the rest of our time together. Uh, so quite a delicate balance. Um, and when it's done right, it actually uh, can have a really powerful impact. Increasing your personal influence um, people gain influence in many ways, from their personality, knowledge, and position within an organization to their level of authority. The base, that, uh, the base that's influential, regardless of the person's position, is expert power. And we'll actually spend a lot more time talking about expert power in the, um, in the next course. And so we'll talk about it just a little bit, um, like I said, because they are linked kind of close together. So when you have this expert power, you can use your task relevant knowledge or the things that you know really well. Those are the things that um, are sort of really uh, the specifics and nuances of your day-to-day -day work that you do. So when you have this expert power and you use your task relevant knowledge or experience to influence others, it takes time and effort to build that expert power, um, but the payoff can be really significant. What you wanna be careful about is to not overly rely on your expertise as you can actually end up really isolated. This is particularly the case if your expertise is not strategic for your organization uh, or if it's not valuable in the role you aspire to do. What can happen is people might only see you as relevant to a specific part of the organization rather than an integral part of the business. So once you identify where to focus your efforts, you know, that could be your personality, that could be increasing your knowledge and expertise. You can make a plan to increase your influence, whatever position you hold. Um, okay, so you want to focus on your personality, knowledge, and expertise as you think about your personal influence. Which of those areas can you build on, enhance, to increase your personal influence. So the following tips that we're gonna talk about now are really general in nature. Uh, and if you've already listened to the Dealing with Difficult um, People uh, course, then one of the things that you heard me talk about are tools in your toolbox. And so again, uh, we will put some tools in your toolbox and depending upon what situation you're in, depending upon your organization, uh, depending upon you know, your colleagues and your team members, then you can decide which tool is most applicable for the situation. Uh, so we'll go ahead and talk about a few general tips in general that can help you to increase your personal influence. Um, you wanna pick and choose and think of creative ways to use the tips at work, in your community service or social network events. The goal is, of course, not to be a pest, a suck up or a stalker. Like that's not what we're looking for. You wanna find balance and opportunity to use uh, the following tips effectively. Balance, balance, balance is the key. So let's talk about good work ethic first. Of course, it demonstrates, when you demonstrate a good work ethic by showing your commitment to the organization's success, uh, the more valuable you are to those in positions of authority, the higher your degree of personal influence will be. 
uh, improve by putting in more effort than what's expected, volunteering to do vital assignments, and picking up work that senior managers don't have time for. Uh, this will increase your personal responsibility, which will enhance your level of influence. And so again, um, when you think about some of the context of what I just shared, it's not about working too much, working lots of hours, um, you know, sort of being a suck up to your um, manager or supervisor. It's about looking at the opportunities that are within your team, within your department, and within your organization, and picking one or two uh, either key projects or committees uh, that you're able to serve on, um, it, you know, and, and that brings about sort of a, an opportunity for other people to get to know you, uh, maybe on a different scale. Um, and so again, strike balance, but be focused on demonstrating a good work ethic uh, at all times. A uh, key trait of leadership, good work ethic, going above and beyond. Uh, the second is value congruence. This is when you behave in a way that is consistent with your key organizational values. To develop more personal influence, you need to understand the organizational culture and behave accordingly. When you act in ways that are congruent, with the organization's values, people will see you as credible and legitimate, and what you say will likely be accepted. And so if your values for your organization are innovation, communication, and transparency, and I'm just you know using those as examples, then in your everyday interactions with people, you wanna demonstrate those. If there are criteria at your organization um, that describe those organizational values, what do those behaviors and skills look like, then you should be sort of the poster employee um, for demonstrating the values. And by doing so, that helps to increase your personal influence. Uh, third, centrality. Improve this by gaining more access to key information in an organization. The more you know, the greater your personal influence. When people see you as someone in the know, they assume what you say and do has relevance. Position yourself more centrally by building a strong network and by finding assignments that allow you to interact with people at all levels of the organization. And so this, again, is really about looking around your team, your department, your organization. Are there opportunities for you to volunteer for projects, volunteer for public relations events? Um, are there opportunities for you to be present during town hall meetings, for instance, where your senior leaders may be present? and providing information and, uh, and employees have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so asking questions in those settings to get the, the most accurate information and then being the person that's able to take that information back to your team. So wherever there's an opportunity for you to interface with organizational communication channels, you want to make sure to take advantage of that. Company emails, company newsletters, um, company you know public relations events, uh, town hall meetings, anything like that that you can participate in, you want to be there or you want to read the information so that you can be able to share information um, you know, sort of in a credible space. You're not spreading rumors. So next up to increase your personal influence uh, is an opportunity, of course, around flexibility. When you exercise judgment, you influence others. People who wait to be told what to do are not very powerful or influential. 
Look for ways to take initiative and improve the way you work. Show people you think critically about situations and make sound, non-routine decisions. Uh, and so again, it may be a conversation that you have with your manager, uh, being very clear uh, that you're looking for opportunities to grow and develop. If there are any projects that you can work on that are not your typical work duties, are there other areas in the department or in the organization uh, that you can shadow someone? Um, are there special projects taking place at the organizational level that you can volunteer for? Um, and in that way, um, you're able to, you know, that demonstrates that you are uh, willing to go above and beyond. Uh, you're flexible in your approach and being able to work with diverse groups of people. Of course, it demonstrates that you um, can take initiative uh, as well. So next up is visibility. This is the degree to which leaders and other powerful and influential people see your efforts. The more you demonstrate your competence, the better. And if you can increase your face-to-face -face communication and direct contact, with senior people in the organization, that's even better. You uh, improve your visibility by going to meetings and other events that influential people attend and join problem-solving committees. And so actually cent uh, centrality, flexibility, and visibility are quite intertwined. Uh, and so you can knock out those three with the same sort of activity volunteering for projects, showing up at PR events, showing up at town hall meetings. Uh, and then when you're, you know, sort of in a space of maybe a team or department meeting or a town hall meeting, um, be present, uh, communicate, ask questions, introduce yourself. Um, you want to take advantage of the space that you're in, especially if key people are present. And again, it's really about balance uh, and sort of how you show up, uh, what your presence is like. Um, you don't want to show up with a presence of, you know, that you're not being authentic. And so you may, not may, but you need to just be very careful of that. And then lastly, relevance. This is how well your personal tasks line up with organizational priorities. The more your work is central to the organization's success, the greater your personal influence. Uh, this is why financial and operational positions have more power and influence typically than administrative ones. Your challenge is to prove how your role contributes to the efficient operation of your organization, regardless of your position. And so um, ultimately, that's really about showing up, showing up prepared, willing, demonstrating initiative, uh, communicating uh, frequently and often asking questions. But again, it's really about striking a great balance. Uh, you don't want to do all of those things and you're doing too much of it where you come across as, you know, a little pesty. People don't want to interface with you. You know, people kind of dread seeing you coming. Uh, you have to strike a really good uh, balance. And then I just want to share a little bit about charismatic power, even though we're talking about influence. Uh, charismatic power stems from desirable personal characteristics that others are actually drawn to. Um, you could call it, per, you know, sometimes people call it personal magnetism. Uh, and actually in our power uh, course, we'll discuss charisma a, a little bit more. So the more your team members pay you positive attention and enjoy your company, the greater your personal power and influence. Charismatic people are confident, assertive, and have presence. Others notice them because of their strength of character. Uh, and so when you have, you know, confidence and passion, 
uh, and you're living a very purposeful life, you're likely to actually sort of come across as really charismatic. Uh, so think about it. If someone is in a job or in a role or in an organization uh, that is really not in alignment with their knowledge, their skills, uh, their talent, uh, their gifts, then can you imagine what that person looks like uh, when they show up to work every day? Uh, you know, probably a little downtrodden, not the most, you know, happiest person to be around versus someone who is, you know, ready, willing, flexible, taking initiative, you know, loves the tasks um, that they are assigned to. Um, when all of those things in, are in alignment, it frequently comes across um, to other people as something that they're drawn to. Uh, and so you want to think about the position that you're in, the role that you're playing, and is all of that in alignment? Because that too has an ability to um, influence how you show up every day. And how you show up every day actually has an impact on your ability to influence other people. You know, at a basic level, it's something you either have or you don't have, um, charisma, that is. And that's why using it as a strategy to gain influence is not really right for everyone. And if it's your only source of influence, uh, for, for example, you, you don't have any expertise in the business, you can lead other people in the wrong direction. If you combine an inspirational approach with passion, a clear vision, and a rational argument, you're more likely to get a positive response from other people. They're more likely to wanna to follow you, they're more likely to wanna to listen. Uh, and when you do this to benefit the organization, your power and influence increase exponentially. Uh, and so we'll spend a little more time talking about charisma in the power course. Um, but I thought it was worth adding a little bit uh, in this particular segment as well. So using your influence, um, a great strategy for gaining influence with coworkers is to use reason. Uh, the success of this approach really depends on you influencing others by using facts and putting your team members' needs and personal values at the center of your argument. And so before you can even get there, you have to do consistent, intentional work on getting to know your team members. Like it's difficult to put your team members' needs and personal values at the center if you don't even know what those are. And so you want to do things um, with your team members that are perhaps not work-related, have discussions with them um, that don't have anything to do with work, but it gives you an opportunity to learn more about them. Um, to learn more about the things that are important to them. And then when needed, you're able to tie those back into um, things that you all need to get done together. And so, for instance, if you have sort of done that homework where you have this really great rapport with someone at work or on your team and you all need to get a task completed, uh, you may make a request to this person and it may sound something like, can you please, you know, create these pivot tables in Excel um, because it's necessary for us to complete this assignment by next Wednesday. And you're really good at that. Like that's a really strong skill set of yours. Or you can say something like, you know, if you agree to do this, it actually meet your own personal goal that you told me about where you wanted to begin to use or learn how to use pivot tables 
uh, even more. It'll give you some practice. Uh, and so I'm hoping, you know, you will agree to help by doing, completing this assignment. Uh, and so that's a little choppy, but I hope you get the point in terms of uh, inserting what you've heard your coworker uh, express in terms of their goals and needs and values, inserting that into the request. Sometimes influence can actually be confused with manipulation. And so I thought it was really important to just put a little blurb um, in this particular course about manipulation. Uh, and so using manipulation uh, may work in the very short term from an influential perspective, but it certainly won't, won't serve you uh, for a long period of time. Uh, influence uh, it's possible when you really know the other person, uh, like I said a minute ago, what's important to them, their goals. Um, manipulation, on the other hand, does not take into the account the, uh, the other person at all. Your needs are at the center of whatever it is you're trying to influence the person to um, help you with or be a part of. And so that those are two polar opposites. So when you're focusing on growing your influential skills, you are also focusing on authentically getting to know the people that you work with uh, and being able to learn about their personal goals, their values, versus uh, if you are really trying to you know, use manipulation uh, you're really only taking into account what your needs are versus the other person. So in other words, manipulation is really quite deceitful. Uh, and so you really want to, when you think about growing your influence, you also want to grow your relationships with people. So let's do a little bit of a case study to see um, what would you do? So imagine you're in a position that reports to a vice president. In your role, you are the organization's expert. And due to your proximity to a vice president and status as expert, you are confident you will soon have a bigger and better professional opportunity. The only authority you have is really confined to the decisions you make that affect your work and area of expertise. Although you are a significant expert for the organization, you really only hear about up upcoming company news and changes and projects just like everyone else through company email blasts, newsletters, etc. You only receive information from your vice president supervisor when there is a new assignment for you. Because you are the expert, you are also not really afforded many professional development opportunities. You also mostly work on your assignments alone and have few opportunities to develop relationships with coworkers. What should you do? to increase your influence. And so I want you to pause the recording right now and then jot down some of the skills that we have discussed that you would use to increase your influence. Be specific in your approach and your reason for selection. Some Solution recommendations, you know, expert power, which we talked about at the top of this uh, course, is actually a double-edged sword. Uh, what has happened in the case study is the person has fallen into the specialist trap. 
uh, you have made yourself vital in one specific area, but your ability to gain influ influence beyond that is really limited. Uh, you need to concentrate on building your network and becoming more of a central figure within the organ organization. Uh, you may have, uh, have a conversation with your vice president supervisor to discuss your appreciation for your expert status. Uh, you may wanna offer up the goals you have in mind for your career and ask if the vice president can help, support, advise, and refer you based on the goals you have shared. Through any additional assignments and connections and presence at other meetings and team assignments, you'll be able to use your skills in other departments or train or mentor new people so they are more aware of your role. The more you can make yourself and your work known throughout the business, the greater influence you will enjoy. It all starts with sort of getting outside of your own head, being clear about your goals, and asking a formal or informal champion to help you through support, advice, and referral. Uh, and so one of the things that I wanna highlight about the case study is um, the person really sort of worked in isolation. Uh, and so, it is one of the key traits of leadership is demonstrating initiative. And so when you find yourself in a situation that is not quite favorable, uh, you want to be intentional in trying to come up with a solution and then taking action um, to move things forward. And so your personal action plan, uh, you know, it's great to learn steps, tips, and actions about a concept or skill, but it's more vital to actually use the skill. So the scenario or the case study was a chance for you to think about using your enhanced skill in building influence. Now I want you to think about a real action plan just for you. Use the questions on this particular slide to reflect on your situation, circumstance, the people you need to talk to, and what you need to ask for. And I want you to make some notes. Hopefully you have like a professional planning journal, um, or maybe you have um, a journal on your phone. Um, and so what I'd like you to do is to think about the questions that are on this slide and create a plan for yourself and jot down your plan in your professional planning journal or in your phone. You want to think about in what ways do you think you lack influence based on some of the things that we've talked about. What can you do to increase your sense of control and empowerment? And again, a part of leadership intelligence is really about being creative and then thinking about um, taking initiative for any problems that you may uh, come across or be in the midst of. How can you be more influ influential? Do you need to work on building your network? Do you need to build uh, your area of expertise? Do you need to have conversations um, with people that, that have influence and ask for you know, an informal or formal mentoring relationship? Uh, envision yourself with more personal influence. And then I want you to think about and write down how does it feel and what are you doing? once you have more influence. What skill do you need to build the most? Uh, is there anyone in your uh, network uh, that, you can, that can help you? Uh, and if so, who is it and when will you have the conversation with them? So part of of really great action planning or goal setting is being really specific and also giving yourself a time frame for when you will complete the task at hand. 
So if there actually is somebody in your network, you want to be specific, or if there more than if there's more than one person, jot down those names and then you know make a date to actually have a conversation with them. And then if you don't have anyone in your organization, in your community, um, are there any professional organizations or networking groups, you know, live and in person or online? that you can join to build the needed relationships. So just a couple of really important summary key points, your character, your expertise, your role, uh, your visibility, and how you align your goals to your organization's objectives are really some of the, the key highlights um, of building your influence uh, and your level of influence depends on you know a number of factors um, and so you want to think about uh, and, and so as you as you work through your plan you may have to work on one or two at a time versus trying to work on all of the factors at once that can be overwhelming uh, it can also set you up for um, setbacks and maybe stumbling. And so if you recognize you need to work on, you know, your, your expertise and your character, uh, you may want to figure out, you know, what does that look like? What's the plan to do that? Who are the people you need to talk to? And when will that happen? And then once you kind of have your feet, you know, sort of settled in those two things, if you need to work on visibility, then you begin to tackle that. Demonstrating a strong work ethic and building your visibility within the business appropriately. Uh, and so again, it's not about, you know, being a pest or stalking people, um, being inappropriate in how you approach people, how often you approach people, how often you communicate with people. Uh, when you're trying to, you know, get the things you need to get, to learn the things you need to learn, to be a part of the projects um, that would help you to grow. Uh, you have to be intentional uh, and self-aware in striking a really good balance. Uh, you also want to be sure to focus on demonstrating your company's value statements, as we said earlier. Uh, and then as much as possible, have an inspirational approach to gain enthusiasm and passion uh, for the goal at hand. And that's just a part of the charisma um, uh, segment that we talked about earlier. And so the more you have a plan and you know the areas that you need to work on, uh, the more likely it is that you'll feel good about your direction. And through that, you actually can come across as, you know, in alignment and inspirational and enthusiastic and passionate about your role and about your future. And things like that are contagious. Uh, and so people may catch hold of that. Uh, and through that uh, is how you can actually leverage influence. So we're going to wrap up, uh, and as always, um, I offer a free call to discuss your leadership development goals and the results possible when we work together. You can click the link, and it will take you directly to my calendar where um, you can schedule some time for us to talk about working together um, through coaching or perhaps through um, some of my online um, small groups. Okay, so complimentary discovery call. There's no cost for that, no catch, no gimmick. Uh, and then here's all of my contact information. Uh, uh, my website, Elite Coach Andrea. I have a great Instagram page uh, and Facebook page at Elite Coach Andrea as well. 
Uh, I would love to receive any feedback that you may have about uh, the four course leadership bundle and you can send that to me via email. Uh, so that is all for building influence and I look forward to chatting with you more in the other upcoming uh, course bundles. Thank you.